So what we have here is a 2015 uh, Cadillac, uh, which is uh, the platform for our uh, concept vehicle, and we're running the Android operating system here. And you know, the, the goal of uh, kind of pulling together this concept was to be able to showcase what is possible given the portfolio that we have of our technologies, Snapdragon, Gobi, our uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth portfolio. And we have a number of different experiences that we have created here for you to be able to see. So Jeff's going to kick the demo off with kind of showing you how we are integrating personalization into the car. We have two handsets here, and these are supposed to uh, depict the driver's handset and the passenger's handset. And what Jeff just did was basically brought the, the handset that the driver's going to use, and the setting of the car automatically adjusted. The seats, the mirrors, the music all adjusted to what was set for that specific driver. So this is Jeff's phone. This is Arun's phone, and Arun's phone has a different set of settings. So what he will show you now is when Arun's phone takes over, different music, different front screen, the navigation here, the date, music he's playing, his calendar. And the idea here is to be able to basically show how you can actually build personalization of the user's phone, and your phone is now becoming so much part of everything that you do. The way that we've implemented this is we've basically taken our all joint protocol that is a part of the all chain alliance and very simply stated what we have here is the head unit is running the all joint protocol the phones are all joint capable so when the phones come into the range of the all joint network which is running wi-fi in the car the phones are recognized by the head unit and they become part of that system and then any personalization any functionality any application that you built are really built up on top uh, we'll also show to you some music applications in a second but maybe let's turn your attention to the instrument cluster that we have. Uh, Swami, I don't know if you can see the, this clearly. But uh, what we have on the instrument cluster, this is the digital cluster, and this is basically supposed to depict what is possible in terms of very high and very rich graphics, very immersive experience. And it's obviously a concept, you know, but we've tried to kind of make this as real as possible in terms of the various indicators that we might see, the RPM, the speedometer. Uh, yep. So, a few different views here. This first view, is uh, showing to you navigation with overlaid uh, lane detection lane departure. So what we have going on here is we basically have a navigation route on the right hand side that's uh, preset and that same route we actually ended up driving. So this is a route in San Diego, we drove this route, we videotaped the route and that same route is actually being displayed on the television monitor right in front of the vehicle. There is a camera that is looking at the television monitor so you can see that same video down here. And what, the, what Snapdragon is doing is it's basically detecting those lanes, so it's de detecting the markers, it's overlaying the actual GPS coordinates that you are essentially driving on, and then it's calculating how much distance you are away from to your destination. So up here on your window, you're seeing the number of feet kind of going down, take a right turn in 70 feet, 50 feet, and then you get to the destination that you need to. And this is really an example. Obviously, we're not going to be getting a real video inside an instrument cluster, but the idea is you're actually uh, using the camera in front of the vehicle to detect exactly where the vehicle is, tying it to GPS. And the way that we can do this is, so we have GPS technology in Snapdragon, and we obviously support the camera, we have GPUs that do all of this processing. We have the camera technology that pulls it together. Okay. Okay, the next demonstration is uh, to show you uh, rear view and a surround view. So rear views are becoming very standard, they'll be mandated by NHTSA by 2018, rear view cameras in all cars. But surround view is actually a very interesting use case. So what makes surround view a bit complex is you have four different cameras if you look on the left hand side of the screen and those four cameras are stitched together. Now when you have a car that is in motion and it's backing up or moving forward trying to park, you have these four cameras that are kind of moving independently of each other. So key requirement is to be able to stitch the images together in real time and to be able to show that image. So you have four different cameras, each of them are capturing, capturing in real time what the images that they're seeing. All of those frames are kind of slightly independent of each other in terms of time because of motion. And then you have to adjust, you have to stitch the scene together perfectly so you can have to line the curves up or the lanes up and then you kind of stitch that together. That's all being done in the GPU. That's happening on the left hand side. The right hand side is just a single camera kind of showing you what's happening in the rear. 